What's up everyone, this is New. Today I'm gonna to be giving you a deep dive video on my favorite strategy this league. It's very meticulous, pretty challenging to pull off, dare I say aspirational content, mapping content. I certainly think it is. It is rolling diviner strong boxes for pilfered divination cards off of a very, very challenging, usually, at least if you do a good job, challenging map boss in the end uh, to just rain a ton of divination cards akin to opening hundreds of stack decks at once granted the uh, odds and the roll ranges of the of the cards are not quite as good as stack decks but still very high chance extremely high jackpot potential it duplicates the cards out of the diviners box and those two cards get then duplicated off the boss so you guaranteed four copies of whichever card happened to drop from any and all diviner strong box in the map you could get one diviner's box you could get 10 diviner's boxes you could get zero you could get 10 diviner's boxes, and they each reopen 10 times <laughs> god forbid i don't know what happened then uh, but essentially no ceiling to the possibilities of this strategy and while there are other strats that exist for divination card farming i think this is the coolest one i'm aware of red vial strategy for abyss farming i do think it's a legit strat and it will prove to provide more native cards to the map or maps that you perhaps have scried over. For example, I happen to have Residence scried over to Jungle Valley, which I've been running. I also have Mausoleum, which has Defiled Cathedral described over there. Yeah, I'm farming, of course, the two highest EV cards, which are the Fire of Unknown Origin and the Apothecary. But anyway, you will get more of those cards with alternate strategy. This is more of a hybrid strat that honestly focused a lot more on the pure jackpot potential of Diviner Strong Boxes. So I would even go so far as to say scrying a map for this strat is not really that important. I don't see it very often. It is, it is important to do it and you should do it, but it's not like the be all end all of the strat. So we're going to be talking about this strategy in detail for you. I have things broken down. Uh, first, we're going to get into the build requirements. How, like what kind of character you need to have, or at least kind of quick and dirty on my character and why it's working for me. Uh, the Atlas and Scarabs that I'm using, this stuff will be linked down below, whether it's the path building or the Atlas strat. A few other resources as well, including a PoEDB website for rolling the boxes. There'll be a section on that. Uh, I'll talk uh, briefly about the action sequence and map, because again, it's a very meticulous strategy. Got to be doing it a certain way to pull it off, I think. And then, of course, full map showcase. Uh, featuring a map that's a little bit better than average, I suspect. Uh, then uh, another little section on using the currency exchange for cards instead of just turning them in. Actually, a pretty smart thing to do. And that'll give you a conclusion. And guys, I suspect, you know, whether you're somebody who watches my content normally, if you're somebody who's kind of following along at Twitch, if you're really serious about this strat, if you haven't done this strat, you're probably going to learn something in this video. So I do definitely recommend watching it. It is a very, very niche strat that is quite lucrative. It's a lot of jackpot potential, a lot of fun to do. And it's a strat that it's going to be quite divisive in the community. A lot of people don't want to do it. A lot of people think it's really mundane and meticulous. Some people think it's super cool and aspirational at the same time. So a lot of different opinions, a lot of different ways. Let me know in the comments below what you think. But anyway, let's get started. I'm going to open up with a very, very juicy clip for you. All right. So I don't know. Maybe you're thinking Snoo, what's the deal with this strategy? I mean, weren't people doing this before and people were excited about the pilfering scarab, but then like it it's not even worth anything hardly anymore because now you know the toughness has been like crazy buffed on the bosses they have like 100 times tankier and they do way more damage than they did and it actually does scale crazy with the cards if you have over a thousand cards the boss is virtually unkillable where's the ceiling on this really can you possibly do this on tier 17s well i figured i would uh attempt to answer that question well over a week ago with much worse gear than i have linked in the pob now didn't even have a nimbus ring at the time but I decided as a one-off shoot, I would step away from T16s and attempt to do one tier 17 abomination boss. I had an idea about how I'd do it. I'd spawn, pre-spawn the, pre the, uh, the, the mini bosses beforehand, clear them out, then spawn the abomination boss, then go back out and do the whole map. And that was a good idea, apparently, at the time. And you can still do it that way now if you wanted to. Then I would set up a bunch of strong boxes so that by design here, this one here, this is the last box I have before I go in. It says guarded by three rare monsters. 
And I'm in way over my head here. I spawned way more Diviners than I thought I would. I knew this boss would have over a thousand cards on it. I didn't know what would happen. But here we go. You can read it in the text right there. I know it's kind of hard to see right here. It says 1,432 Divination cards. The boss is casting one ability off. I get out of the way because I don't want to get even touched by whatever he's about to do. But here in a second, I'm going to go back in and we're going to see what happens to the boss's health. There it is. And he's dead. Now, what just happened there? Well, that is Soul Eater combined with Ice Prison. Again, no Nimbus Ring, a lot less damage than I do currently right now. 63 Headhunter buffs helps a lot. A whole bunch of Shrine buffs, none of which are actually giving me extra damage. Got pretty unlucky on that front. But uh, the combination of Soul Eater and Ice Prison absolutely blows single target out the water. And even like a normal sort of Mage Blood wearing uber boss or uh, would not be able to do what i just did here as far as i understand i've heard it from testimonies from a lot of different people uh that's not exactly possible uh what was done there so that does require a headhunter to do it to like maximum <laughs> levels if you will uh but that is something that happened and it at least at the very least it showcases gives you some sense of a ceiling of what is possible with this strategy. No, so the boss died. I'm excited. I'm not paying any attention to what's going on. I just die from an after death effect. And he dropped a reality fragment. He's starting to drop the divination cards. Certainly hoping that there's a good card in here. So happens there was not. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Alright, so in proper fashion, I'm going to show you something a little slightly different. Basically the same thing. Similar amount of cards, but a different result. On a tier 16 boss, around the same time, uh, over a week ago that I actually presented this highlight on YouTube itself. This is the beach boss. I got 33 headhunter buffs, no soul leader, no ice prison. So a little bit more proper damage at the time. You can see it's feeling a little bit more tanky, but I'm about to drop the single best card that I've ever dropped. Even still to this date, hundreds of maps later, this is still the best card I've dropped off a single card off of the boss. Of course, I've dropped a lot of cards that are worth a lot, but it's four unrequited love, extraordinarily rare card. And I was hooked, okay? I was utterly hooked on this strat this moment. I mean, this really solidified things. And this is the reason, this is ultimately the reason why I'm making this video because I can't stop running this strategy. I really don't even want to explore other things that the league has to offer. This is just an absolute fantastic blend of meticulous prep gameplay, execution, mapping experience, clear, and it all surmising of the one fantastic moment where I'm really excited anticipated for what happened could be a total dud nothing good comes of it like in the tier 17 boss kill unfortunately or it could be out of this world amazing uh, like the moment that you saw right here okay we're gonna kick things off with a subject matter that honestly I just want to get out right out in the open and that is about the character requirements or the build requirements for this strategy. this truly is a difficult strategy to pull off uh, not just in terms of execution, but the kind of build that's required. I'm not kidding, guys. When I say multiple occasions, I've had players come in who are extremely well-geared uber boss killers. They say they one-tap uber boss. They can do the feared right and left, like with their eyes closed on in any set of modifiers <laughs> on the invitation. But they can't do a tier 16 pilfered boss with just a few hundred cards. You just get one-tapped by it. I don't know what's going on. Uh, to be completely honest with you guys, I don't know what's going on. I I've never made a bosser before. I would assume bossers would be fantastic with this. Just some mage blood wearing one tapping bosser would be really good at this. But maybe there's some problems with that. I would love to hear your insights in the comments section on this particular setup. But I'm going to share with you what I've been doing and why it's been working for me. And honestly, a lot of it relies on the secret weapon of Oath of Winter, which is a Warden Ascendancy specific, which allows me to just permanently freeze bosses. If you attack fast enough, if you attack hard enough, doesn't matter how much uh, toughness the boss has, especially if you have an insane amount of attack speed, especially if you walk into a boss room with Soul Eater, you're just going to be permanently frozen the whole time anyway. Uh, I, I have to mess up pretty bad in order to fail a map at this point. I, I'm not, I mean, I've killed bosses over 2,000 cards at this point on the regular, and it's it's really not hard when you permanently freeze bosses. Uh, running maps with twin bosses is a bad idea. We'll get into more about the mapping stuff uh, with the scarabs and things, so I'll save that. But anyway, a Warden Ascendancy is like a catch all total enabler for this strat. And am I saying you have to, you drop whatever build you're doing, you have to run a Warden? I'm not saying that, but. I will say this, Lightning Strike Wardens having an easy time with this, with this strap. Lightning Strike Slayers, not so much. <laughs> now, 
That's like me trying to run a map where, with the map mod, uh, action speed cannot be reduced below base mobs. It makes it really scary and precarious and very dangerous. So this whole setup here, I, I have a build. It's an elemental hit build doing way more damage than normal with the Warden Ascendancy through the Oath of Spring, Oath of Summer, and then Avatar of Wilds. I'm doing something like three times as much damage as I normally do on a bow build with the current gear threshold. I do have an investment of a few hundred divines at this point. Yeah, I got nice cluster setups, got a good timeless jewel, got the massive wheel here. I do not have mirror tier gear, okay? Uh, there probably is a, at least a mirror invested into the build in total. Uh, I did recently get Nimbus Ring, which was not included uh, in the showcases before. It greatly helped with the damage, of course. And I just go in and I just stand underneath the boss, and the return projectiles now will shotgun, and it just completely destroys the boss permanently frozen until he's dead in most cases so unfortunately my insights for this section are not the greatest i wish i knew more i wish i could give you better insight on that i think it's really important to be upfront and you know honest about the situation this strategy is very difficult to do a lot of characters a lot of types that evidently can't do it even ones that you would think would be excellent at it uh, still struggling with it and i don't think it's because people are bad at the game or something i just think it is one of those weird things where the way it, this whole th strat is balanced around the boss is just crazy i mean they're just crazy tanky and crazy amount of damage and so i do recommend doing it on easier bosses okay the beach boss is very easy i like bosses like for example dry sea where you can basically avoid every single hit mausoleum's really smart too with uh, the not being able to spawn boss altars getting extra area which does impact the drops from the diviners boxes the area quant matters a lot that's a really good idea uh, to run a boss that at least if you mess things up, you can kill it. But I don't recommend setting yourself up for a strat where you're just spending all day and night whittling down a boss. Like, that's not a smart way to do it. Don't do the strat if you just, like, have a character that really can't just blitz. I like, think you should you should be able to blitz down the boss. Uh, what If you're doing the strat, you should be able to just blitz down the boss. Uh, if that's not going on, then I recommend a different strat or a different build or something to do that. So that's all I'm going to say. On this section, I would love some more insight from you guys in the comments below if you have any uh, better insights on that. Okay, we're moving on to the Atlas, Scarabs, and the map rolling. I know a lot more about this section and give you some really great information. I have been tinkering around with these settings a great deal. I've ran hundreds of maps this way, and this is my current Atlas. All right, it's not rock solid, not set in stone, but no major changes are going to take place for sure about what I'm doing. I'm a little iffy on how important these points are here for Beyond. This is only going to really affect, well, I guess more Headhunter buffs, more native cards and drops. It's not going to matter for Diviner's drops. It's maybe going the Quant wheel is better, but, I mean, it's just 1%. It's not going to matter that much. Maybe going for Backup Cash and get the duped Arcanist box is a good idea. But, guys, with the combination of the Discernment Scarab and then you crank these up here, it's getting in the way of the Diviner's spawn chance. It's something I've kind of realized lately. And, yes, uh, experimenting without... Uh, either of the any of these other nodes is indeed does seem to be giving me I don't know maybe an average of one extra diviners per map honestly it's pretty wild uh, but yeah still going full blown shrines here because shrines are going to help with spawning eldritch minions which do impact uh, how many cards drop because area quantity is king for this okay so that's kind of one major morsel secret information for you. Player quantity doesn't matter. Never mattered for this. It's one of the reasons why it's a good strategy because they rip player quantity out of the game. I'm not even going for the Covetous Shrine anymore. I don't care that much about it. My focus is on area quantity. I want to spawn as many Eldritch minion altars as I can. I got as much pack size as I can here. I'm running. I'm actually running eight mod corrupted maps in many cases uh, with this setup, even though it's kind of hard to get that. Uh, you will not see tamper proof in this strategy. It's specific to rolling strong boxes, so we cannot take this. Uh, no no convenience here. And sure, the lower investment version of the strat, which I did 100 maps on, it's fine. It still works. I guess the Pilfered Scarab is worth doing in that setup. I went ahead and went uh, singular focus. Could save a few points here, but I, I like to just go ahead and get as many uh, maps as I can because I'm having to roll a lot of maps uh, to get the strat up and running. So I do prioritize some of Beyond because it does spawn a lot of Beyond mobs from strong boxes, a lot of rares, a lot of native cards, blocking everything because I don't want other mechanics to get in the way spawning as many boxes as i can apparently ritual can't spawn anyway and then i'm forcing De delhi with a orb so i'm saving a few points here i used to spec into remarkable relics but i've heard that it doesn't really matter uh at least for like the scarabs that come out of the boxes 
not going to make any difference. So yeah, just going all all in on the increased effect modifiers on the maps, getting a lot of quant, getting some beyond on there on the side, but focusing on ambush and shrines and then eater altar stuff. And that's it for the atlas. Now for the scarabs, the scarabs are as follows. These three ambush scarabs will just be regular ambush scarabs on the lesser investment strat. But for this strategy, and yeah, this one's way better. And yes, it, it certainly seems worth it to me to pay the price of the ambush scarab of containment. This is monstrous treasure. If you didn't already know, this monstrous treasure automatically spawns 36 strong boxes into the map. Except it doesn't usually spawn 36 strong boxes in the map because it can't fit them all. Which is why block other mechanics and certain zoning issues are at play here. Uh, evidently shrines have maybe the smallest zoning area about like you'll see strong boxes spawning right next to shrines all the time and you'll see extra eldritch packs spawn in there so there's a really good reason why i do shrines and yes i even go down here and click domination i actually don't do ambush I do domination ambush is going to rip strong boxes off even more anyway and the domination is going to matter a lot for the shrines taking them into the boss room as well as getting a whole bunch of extra eldritch minion packs uh, yeah, if you didn't know, if you've never tried it before, combine Monsters Treasure with a bunch of shrines and you will get back a lot of the native monsters in the map you lost uh, in the process, the Eldritch Packs in particular. It's really great. And Area Quant is king. It matters such a huge deal. Uh, it's completely, that number that's on the right side of the screen when you open the map, that is totally multiplicative with all drops from inside strong boxes and there's not that many ways to scale strong box loot one big way to scale it however is this one here ambush scarab of potency increases effect of explicit modifiers on strong boxes in area gives you a whole bunch of extra cards when you target roll the strong boxes i don't think it's worth rolling strong boxes unless you have this scarab and this is pretty new this is something that's making this chat kind of fun and new is is getting much more incentive to rolling the boxes getting a lot of extra value here's something else giving even more value on the Atlas, we have a 16% chance for strong boxes in area to be openable again. This is additive with that, so it's a total of 31%. Almost a 1 in 3 chance of reopening. And guys, I've seen the same box open over 10 times before. I don't I don't have it on a clip, unfortunately, but I think I reached, I think 12 was the number I saw. Unfortunately, that was a completely unconspicuous box, and it didn't matter. It wasn't a Diviner's box. I've opened a Diviner's box, I think, 8 times before uh, was my uh, rolling record, shall we say. So these ambush scarabs are really important here. Uh, oh yeah, I, I clicked the wrong three here. <laughs> it was supposed to be these three would be ambush scarabs on a lesser investment. Discernment scarab must be in play for this strat. You have to have this. It's been suggested to me that it probably increases the the weighting of the rare boxes. Arcanist, diviners, and cartographers is uh, increased by a factor of 10. Okay, 10x the weighting. And this is why you don't want to... Also increase the chance of Arcanists or Cartographers to spawn lightly, likely uh, in the map as well. Or it's getting, the, getting in the way of the spawn chance of Diviner. Every box, there's a waiting on it. Just like there's waiting for cards, waitings for everything in the game. There's waitings for whichever box spawns as whatever it spawns. And this Scarab doing huge heavy lifting uh, to increase your chance of getting Diviner is absolutely mandatory for this strat on here. The last one may not really seem mandatory, but I mean, my god, it's doubling your returns essentially divination scarab of pilfering if you're first kind of getting into this strat maybe do the lower investment maybe no pilfering scarab just see if you kind of like rolling boxes you can do ambush version with no pilfering kind of get you know your feet into the door on that but ultimately you're going to want to run this okay so <laughs> you're gonna go from two to four cards of whatever it is whether it's reign of chaos or house of mirrors you go from two cards to four cards but you got to be able to kill that boss you got to be able to have the character in the build to do it uh, but this is the one and only divination card. The other divination card, uh, divination scarabs rather, they don't impact anything whatsoever. Okay, and then the bottom slot, I have a map. Put the map in the bottom slot. I guess there's still a bug with the scarabs not working necessarily. I think discernment scarab might be bugged. If you put it in the bottom section, it doesn't necessarily work. Uh, yeah, it's a separate bug. So here's an example of a few maps that I'm running. Okay, uh, these are six modded. I am running eight modded as well. But, you know, I have a regex, which I will link down in the description below, okay? I'm a freeze-based build, so I'm not going to run with chance to avoid elemental ailments or action speed can't be reduced. I'm not going to run those. I can still run reflect. I can get around that if I have to. And just about anything else on T16s I can run. Um, I don't run no leech currently because I don't have life on hit. 
But anyway, these are the maps. I have hit them with the Deli Orb, whichever one, and then they are chiseled with Cartographer Chiseled. Do not use Divination Chisels on here. I know I showcased that in the beginning, but I wasn't aware at the time that the percent more multipliers for Currency Scarabs or Divination Cards do not apply to strong boxes whatsoever. Though actually, Ambush Strats on Tier 17 probably shouldn't be using any of those Scarabs. They should be using, I mean, if it's about the content of the box itself. Yeah, unfortunately, you got to use Cartographer Box because this impacts the area quant, which does affect things. So it is giving you increased drops, uh, whereas the Divination Chisel, which you would think would give you way more Divination Guard, does not impact anything about the Diviner Strongbox loot. It does matter for the native monsters on the map, but that's not really what we're targeting here. That's not the main focus, so got to use the regular Cartographer Chisel. It's cheaper, so that's nice, right? So these are kind of some of the maps that it would roll, and I would hope they would spawn 8 Mod Corrupted like this, for example. I'll run this map. I'm saving this at a different time. It has monsters cannot be leached from, so I can't really run that right now. But uh, when I get a whole bunch of life on hit, then I can run a map like this. This will be like a premium optimal map. Okay, 130% quant, 42% pack side, very uh, qualityed up, very, very nice map. Will give me a lot of cards out of each box. And yeah, I might send this through and get zero boxes. Well, that's part of it. That's part of the <laughs> topsy-turviness of the strat. But there you go. That is the Atlas, Scarabs, and Maps. Yeah, here's a section... I absolutely must include in the video or I'm gonna get a lot of pushback. So many people ask me questions in, in the stream about how I'm rolling the boxes, what the priority is. So this is the resource, guys. This is it. I'm showing you right now how I roll the boxes, bring it all the way down to PoEDB so you can see uh, the, the whole breakdown. Now, unfortunately, Diviner Strong Boxes is not populated, not an option on here. I can't show you. There are three suffixes that are missing, okay? They're all three basically the same thing, though, and they seem to have much higher weighting than the other options, by the way. They are contains additional items, additional items of divination cards as, or divination, I can't remember the exact wording, divination cards or additional currency or unique items or corrupted items. Now, metadata suggests it's a two to four number and it's probably not even if impacted by the scarabs, which were mentioned before, increasing the explicit modifiers by 75%. I would say it's probably not impacted because it would seem that this one here, three to eight number matters a lot more. Okay, this one gives you a lot more cards than those do. So if you haven't figured it out, these are the two mods you wanna hit together. Uh, high roll ranges will be really good. It goes all the way up to 14 additional items. And this number goes all the way up to 105% increased quantity of contained items. So this perfect Diviner Strongbox would be 105% increased quantity of contained items, 14 additional items, and then contains additional divination cards that grant currency or something like that. I don't think it really matters what the last one is. Do I roll my Diviner's boxes until I hit the perfect strong boxes? Hell no, because I would be blowing multiple divine orbs <laughs> per box if I tried to do that. Not worth it. And everybody will go through this. Everyone who tries to do the strat will, will figure it out. You know, at some point you realize, whoa, I'm dumping way too much currency into trying to hit the perfect box. Not worth it. So I kind of got a system now that I go through. And it, it goes something like this. Scour the diviner's box. Engineering orb, 20%. And that does seem to grant 20% uh, more loot from the box, I guess. Uh, and then Alcorb. And I'm going to Chaos Spam. Now, I could do Scour, Alk, Scour, Alk, Scour, Alk. That would be technically smarter, but uh, it doesn't it doesn't work out so well because you're going to eventually misclick and accidentally click the box just like you would if you were doing Scour Chance or Ch Scour Chance. Or. Uh, for the record, you cannot hit the unique Diviner's box with the Scour Chance anyway unless the map is Shaper Influenced and it's something like 300 Chance Orbs on average to hit anyway. Not worth it. Actually, it may not even be possible. Uh, I haven't, uh, technically, I'm not aware of it. it's possible. Definitely possible for the Arcanist box, but maybe not for the Diviner's box. Uh, that's still kind of an unknown. But anyway, back to the matter at hand. These are rare strong boxes. We're going to be just slamming, just holding, I guess holding shift and right click for the chaos spam until I hit either both of these together or just one of them with a high roll range, especially if it's a perfect roll range. And it has, you know, full, full on prefixes already hit and it's got at least one open suffix, then I'll exalt slam. If it's got two open suffixes, great, I'll double exalt slam. There's a decent chance I'll hit the one I'm missing. It doesn't always happen, but I'll settle for whatever. I know at least I have a decent box at that point. If I hit plus one chest level, which is the lowest weighting, that's unfortunate. I may, I may actually reroll it then. Uh, but again, okay, this is 14 additional items. The others are two to four additional items each that aren't displayed here. 
And so that makes for a really good strong box. And I spend on average maybe 20 Chaos Orbs and one Exalted Orb. So th that's a real deep dive on how I do the strong boxes. We do need to make a, a quick mention about the prefixes. If you're thinking this is all too convoluted, not worth it, <laughs> try rolling strong boxes one time. You'll see just how bad Diviner's boxes are automatically. You'll chaos spam them and you will not see this combination except not even one out of 10 chaos orbs. Will you see this combination even show up on average? It's really hard to hit this. I, I don't know if it's because there's way more weightings on the prefix side or what's going on, but I swear to you, you get way more cards when you actually hit this combo. Or at least if you get one of them really high. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of... It, it's around twice as many cards as you would normally see. If you got a really high, well-rolled map, you get almost twice as many cards as you would on like your average Diviner's Box just for rolling them. It's, it's that significant. And that does actually make it worth the time it takes to do the process. I think it does. All right, so going back over the prefix side, something I also care about is rolling boxes at the end of the map so I get extra headhunter buffs, which you're going to see in the map showcase. Guarded by a stream of monsters is very good. You get a whole bunch of extra rare monsters, and I mean, you could do this for alternate strategies if you want uh, to roll boxes to, so they force spawn a bunch of rares. I mean, you can kind of use your imagination uh, how good that might be for a separate strat, totally separate strat. But anyway, there's also guarded by three rare monsters, higher weighting, and comes onto the box much more often. And if I go ahead and, you know, it, it's very quick. This is actually pretty easy just to hit one of these two. If I set up, you know, four or five or six strong boxes with that near the boss room, I'm gonna go in with a full set of headhunter buffs. Probably gonna have Soul Eater and everything. It's gonna make the boss really easy. And I used to run maps with a Legion, but that ripped strong boxes off the map because of zoning issues. Now, uh, I just do this. And I don't even mess with it if I didn't spawn more than like one diviner's box anyway so it, it sets things up really nice for if i know I, i'm on the precipice of an outstanding map well okay we'll slow the map down we'll actually roll a bunch of boxes give myself the best chance possible to succeed and i'll do that and of course for the diviner's boxes i'll focus on this for a while i was indeed rolling arcana strong boxes but not currently doing that uh, per the changes in the atlas and we'll see that whole thing play out in the map showcase now enter a section on the action sequence of a map. So this actually matters. Uh, guys, I, I know this is going to seem like overly convoluted and meticulous. I love this kind of thing in an ARPG. I like not just turning my brain off and running through maps. I like actually, you know, engaging with the content and perhaps even on a macro level running a specific map a certain way. So in Jungle Valley, I go there, back, and there again. That's like the macro clear right i'm ignoring shrines except the first one okay i enter a map and i beeline for the shrine this is because the shrine auto spawns the eldritch influence and if you've ever put uh monstrous treasure with eldritch influence together they don't go together well you can full clear an entire map and fail to even spawn the influence that's where shrines come in they automatically allow you to spawn the influence and then they're going to spawn a lot of minions when you backtrack going back i ignore killing delirium monsters before that first shrine if i can it seems to positively impact how many eldritch minions spawn and that matters a great deal getting more eldritch minions especially if you're running eight mod corrupted maps to get you know, the highest pack size on that getting a lot of area alters delirium doesn't seem to matter for the drops really much it's there to help with the eldritch minion spawns and i guess with the uh, rares more headhunter buffs or whatever but basically i'm ignoring shrines until the very end i'm ignoring some of the best rolled boxes with the guarded by rare monsters till the very end which you can see that in the map showcase i'm just beelining for the first shrine then backtracking and i'll split screen and start rolling boxes on the go it's very dangerous sometimes die get picked off that's why this is in here and yeah i'm rolling diviners i'll go ahead and alk whatever boxes are scoured just to you know give them something Make more monsters spawn, more overall loot drop, if you will. And then, you know, at the end, towards the end, I'll decide, okay, it's go time. Let's pick up all the shrines at once, up to 10 different shrine effects, and let's get 40, 50, 60 headhunter buffs, opening all the best boxes that remain. And, you know, that none of that's all that necessary if I only have like one or two diviners boxes on the map, which I'll know ahead of time. But it is pretty necessary if I got like five or six, <laughs> which you're going to see in the map showcase. It's going to have... A lot, but that's it. That's kind of the sort of action sequence. So TLDR, grab shrine first, don't kill anything. Backtrack, start rolling all the boxes. 
Then at the very end, when you've got everything ready, it's go time. Pick up all the shrines. Open all the, all the boxes with the rare monsters in them. Go kill the boss. That's about it. Well, here it is, guys. No Snoo Bay video would be complete without a proper map showcase of the strategy in question. This is a better than average map. I've already done a full sweep on it. I decided I should probably approach it that way and we'll just wait until I happen to spawn a map with multiple Diviner strong boxes and Eldritch Altars to the point where I know it's going to be a much better than average map. That's what we have on our hands. This map has six Diviner's boxes and multiple Quant Altars to grab. I have just done a full sweep. I went back and forth. I didn't click a single thing. I just killed the native monsters on the map. No strong boxes opened. No strong boxes rolled. No Eldritch Altars clicked yet. So it's a blank slate and you're going to see exactly how things went. Uh, anyway, exactly the same Atlas that I showcase in the front end of the video with the same gear, path of building. Everything here is the same. So what I did is when I entered this map, first thing I like to do is I check to see how many boxes there are. 37 is the max. 35 means it's a better than average spawn rate. And then very, very, very first thing I do is I rush to the shrine. I try not to kill anything. So I went up here and then I shot a few arrows, killed everything, spawned an Eldritch altar right here. And I would normally click it on the go, regardless of whatever modifiers it has. And then I usually open up my inventory and do a split screen here and I start rolling the boxes as I go. Of course, in this case, I wanted to check and verify the map was really good uh, before I went through that whole process. But here we go. We got one diviners in the front. I like having this sort of setup. Usually this is enough to do everything I need to do. If it's not, well, that means it's a fantastic map and I'm not going to be mad if I have to port back out uh, to do this. So this box right here happens to have the two best rolls I'm looking for. Contains additional items and increased quantity of contained items. I mentioned this before in the video. So I want to get high roll ranges on both if I can. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So this box is pretty good. As long as at least one of the roll ranges is really high, it's probably worth doing. The problem is if I slam this, I might slam a prefix. And I don't really like that. So it's going to take two exalted orbs likely to hit what I need to. Looks like I might have just rolled over a decent version. So I like, you know, to hit either a perfect roll of the suffix I'm looking for with three prefixes. And then I'll double exalt slam. Or uh, hit kind of two and two a really high roll. Obviously, if it hits all, all of them at once, it's fine. Ran into the same thing again. I could Exalt Slam, but I'm, I'm trying to stay away from the Exalted Orbs are almost like 10 to 1 now. It's getting pretty expensive. So you got pretty lucky, and usually it's going to cost around 20 Chaos plus an Exalted Orb, probably, per box with how I'm rolling them. I'm not trying to roll them absolutely perfect, uh, but this is satisfactory for me. Very good roll range on the quantity, percent quantity, and bad roll range on the additional items. Uh, but the contained additional divination cards that give currency is projected to be like a two to four additional items thing. So this is definitely better than average. And from my vantage point, this is satisfactory at the current state of the game. So I'm going to stick with that. I would love to have perfect on every single one. And for a while there, I was, I was being super strict on how I rolled these. It proved to be uh, too costly. <laughs> at some point, you know, you, you just got to give in and take what you get. Diviner's number two right here. I went ahead and hit a second quant altar. And that looks almost identical to the one I just rolled with just the orb of alchemy, okay? Use the engineering orbs, of course, uh, to increase. I mean, I, I assume that just gives me basically 20% more loot that comes out of it. And that's going to be satisfactory. You'll notice I'm not picking up the shrines because I'm going to save them for the end on the sort of last hurrah because I'd like to take those shrines into the boss room if possible kind of an iffy one here uh roll ranges are a little bit poor i think i'm gonna try and re-roll again yeah this one's pretty questionable over 100 percent. i feel pretty good about that number i'm gonna go ahead and let that one slide so now three boxes having both of the mods i'm really looking for sometimes i do settle with just one of the premium modifiers like this i'll go ahead and hit this so sometimes if i have something like this especially if this number is over 100 percent, this is three prefixes once uh or no sorry it's two suffixes okay in that case i'm not exalt slamming uh, because it's not three and one all 
All right, here we go. Glad, gl I'm glad this happened so I can show you what I do here. So this is what I mentioned before. Three prefixes, one suffix. If this is 14 additional items or 100% increased quantity of items contained, a double exalt slam is going to have a pretty good chance of hitting one of the two great mods I'm looking for. Missed on that one, and it missed on this one. And you know what? This is still a pretty damn good strong box. It's not going to be quite as good as if I hit a lot of uh, flat increased number of items found, but it's still fine. This is a basic currency dupes altar. It's not going to really mean much. And then the final altar we have up here is also not going to really mean much. We have our fourth diviners. Four out of six. So let's go ahead and hit that if I can get this trash out of the map. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right, good. I'm, g I'm getting to showcase everything here. So this is three prefixes, one suffix, a perfect roll in the flat additional items. This will be the worst strong box I'll settle for if I double slam uh, into the mediocre mods, which is this contains additional divination cards as X. Again, that's a two to four, I believe, flat. So I really, really, really want to hit percent and I missed. So that's unfortunate. This is probably going to give me the least amount of loot, but I really feel bad about double exalt slamming and then trying to re-roll again after that. You if I were to re-roll after double exalting, it's on that strong box there. But man, that, that is a beautiful thing when you magically slam in like 100% quantum. So I do think it's worth the risk. Here we go. Just uh, straight up chaos this. And, and you, you're getting to see a little bit unusually lucky chaos orb hits here. I mean, I, you could easily you could easily throw 100 chaos orbs into a diviner's box and not get a roll this good. Just want you guys to be aware. That is why exalting is on the table with this strat. All right, the last one, there's one more somewhere. I can't remember. Hmm. Did I forget about it? <laughs> Maybe I already got it or I forgot about it. I can't remember. Okay, well, I'll be on the lookout for it when we come back. Now, the next thing I do, after I've rolled all the Diviner's boxes, I take a look and, especially if it's a good map, I'm going to care about taking Headhunter buffs into the boss room. If I'm beginning this strategy it's my first time ever what i'll do is i'll go ahead and go into the boss room and clear until the boss spawns and exit map without the portal that means that whatever buffs i take into the boss room are going to have their full uptime shrine buffs headhunter buffs everything but uh the way i do it now that is time consuming so i go ahead and instead prep up a few boxes on the back end like this guarded by three additional rare I rare monsters or guarded by a stream of monsters is actually even better uh, but these boxes, a few of them, depending on how many diviners I have, perhaps you could say one box per one diviner set this way. But I'm looking for guarded by three rare monsters or a stream of monsters. Guarded by Rogue Exile, guarded by Magic Packs, not good. Not good enough here. Sometimes on some of these boxes, you'll roll something like you know, five additional ambush characters. Which is really good. Leave it as it is. Sometimes this is being done on Arcanus boxes. Right now I'm not getting the double Arcanus box loot. So I don't care as much about it. So just basically all of the very back end boxes in the map. I'm prepping them up this way. Now this is just awful. Magic pack and rogue exile. Not like this. Okay. I would like to roll at least one with a stream of monsters. So you can see what that looks like. I don't know if I can hit it. <laughs> I would like to do it once. I would like to uh, show you what that looks like. Going to buy a pack of monsters. It's a rare hit. I'll, I'll give it one more. One more try. Now you can roll Arcanus boxes too. And if you have it, if you spec to get double loot from them, that's really not a bad idea. So like this is a pretty good roll on an Arcanus box. I'll just leave it there. I mean, it is a good roll. And you know, you can get double Valdo's boxes pretty easily there. All right, so now what I do is I start running the map. And this is it's still not really go-go time. I'm just gonna basically start opening boxes. Uh, this is, I'm trying to like open and go. I usually skip the diviners because I'm tracking them as a matter of fact. Uh, but this is allowing me to open boxes safely without getting pegged down by the uh, Ice Nova, or what have you. And then we'll count the Diviner box opens here in a moment. 
Okay, this is the first one I'm opening. I get 31% chance to reopen. It could mean a whole bunch of extra cards. Each time I open a box, it's it's roughly, you know, 130 to 160 additional cards, maybe. Now, also, if you're kind of new at this, you don't really want to mess with looting until afterwards. Because you want to really just keep the ball rolling as much as possible. I'm still going to ignore the shrines. It's not that magic moment yet when I'm going for gold. Still kind of, you know, easy going. I'm starting to ramp up. You, you, you could say I'm ramping. <laughs> you could say I'm ramping. You see the headhunter buffs are coming in. You can see I have no problem surviving the Ice Nova at this point. That's usually the case. Okay, second diviners open here. No reopen. Here it says guarded by a stream of monsters, so we were able to see it. And if you were watching the headhunter buff count, you will see uh, it, it went up like consistently right there. Third reopen, or third diviner's box open. Right there. And this is around the point when I'm going to start taking the shrine thing seriously, okay? So I got one shrine here. I don't think I had any others. And so I'd like to try and take all the shrine buffs into the boss room if possible. You can see they have about a minute 20, and a headhunter buff has a minute. Here's the fourth diviner's box. See if we get one reopen here. No. Just can't, can't get it. I suppose for the sake of a proper demonstration, it is pretty wise to no longer loot at this point, if I'm being smart about it. So I'll just kind of give up looting. And now all of these boxes I'm opening here have additional rare items. Or rare, rare monsters, rather. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I only have five Divinus boxes. Oh no, okay, the sixth one's up here. Okay, I did do all six. Okay, we get one reopen. This will be the seventh time I've opened a Diviner's Box, so I'm take, I'm getting seven Diviner's Boxes. means this might have... No, it's not going to have a thousand cards. It'll probably have 800 to 900 cards. I have 60 Headhunter buffs. I would have already killed the boss. And I'm going to be looking for that boss to spawn. I'm going to get right underneath him with the Nimbus Ring that I have. Load of damage. I've got the Ice Nova even. I think I got Soul Eater. 839 cards. And there you go. Well, I mean, it even got kind of average drops, too. I got four Divine Beauty, nothing super special. A lot of cards in here that are worth one to three Chaos. And you know what I can do with those, right? Those are real value. And then I'm pressing all so you can get a sense of what this looks like. I mean, it's just off the screen with a bunch of trashy cards. And wow, I forgot to grab that shrine. Whoops. Don't do that. Don't forget to grab the shrine. It would be wise to finish opening the boxes, but you know, if you if you care if you care deeply about not messing it up, you absolutely want to make sure you open all the dividers boxes, send those all to the boss room. Uh, the other boxes are not terribly important. Again, got Nimus, uh, Nimus card scribed over to Jungle Valley. So every great once in a while, I'll get that drop. It really is pretty rare. But here we go. I mean, a, a full clear. It's clean. Eight hundred something cards on the box and that's a wrap i mean that took a while to do that because i was you know showcasing it very meticulously when i go through a map like that even one that you know has six boxes on it it's still taking me under 10 minutes at this point to do a map like that so it's really not too bad and and if the map only has you know zero to one or even two boxes just get it done in like four minutes flat I won't uh, do the whole process of rolling, you know, increased or guarded by rare monsters, that whole thing. Won't even bother with that. We'll, ha we'll have to roll hardly any uh, Diviner's boxes. And I'm not rolling Arcanus boxes now either with the current strats. So it gets a lot faster. It's streamlined pretty well. Check this out. Here's my Divination tab. It has all of the cards that I have. If you set up the tab affinities, it will just dump all of the cards in there. And I can just control right click to bring all the cards out. I want control right click to throw them all in. Doesn't matter if there's, you know, a huge sample size, uh, like for example here, or a small sample size. And, you know, some of these cards obviously worth a lot more than others. Uh, but each one of these with the current strict filter that I am using, which is linked in the description of the video, it's a mega strict filter currently. Every single card is worth at least 
uh, one to three chaos. So what do you do afterwards? Well, of course you're gonna turn the cards in, right? Because you know, you gotta turn the cards in. This is the nice tedious process. And yeah, this can make it seem like it's maybe not as good of a strategy as I lead you on to believe. Well, something you might not have been aware of is that with the new currency exchange, we can forego go this process and liquidate everything instantly. In some cases, obviously for a discount, you'll see here, I have saved some of these to showcase for you. Now you would probably think that of course you're just gonna turn the cards in and maybe you get something good, maybe not. Maybe you get a headhunter, maybe you get a mage blood out of the wretched, maybe not. Or, you know, you just let other people do it. And you'll see if you double check the rates on here, I'm not getting shafted by selling them for this price. I'm doing okay on this. Now, sometimes it can be kind of hard to sell. It looks like the heroic shots not really selling. I may actually have to turn those in, uh, but check this out. Chaotic disposition, which you just turned in. Okay, it's turn it in, get five chaos. I can just dump them all with one control right click real easy, sell 100 at once for 400 chaos, and yeah, I lose 20% of the currency, but that might be the difference uh, in your mind, or my mind, that could be the difference between making it worth pick it up, picking it up uh, versus not. And so you can use the currency exchange, yes, it costs a little bit of gold to do this, but I mean, I have millions of gold now in the system, so that's kind of a non-factor for me. Maybe it is for you, maybe not. But I just wanted to give this tidbit of information to you. I stumbled onto it, honestly, only a few days ago. And it's really helped sort of revitalize my enthusiasm for the strategy. Because, yeah, I was getting a little bit bogged down by having to turn in all of those cards. I was, I was starting to let them pile up kind of ridiculously in my stash. Wasn't sure if I was ever going to liquidate them or not. But now, it's not as bad. Not all of these cards that I'm kind of showcasing to you. You might be thinking of other cards Maybe they sell, maybe they don't, but here's a list of some that definitely did, and I got the proof right here. Okay, guys, that's going to conclude the deep dive on rolling diviner strong boxes to be pilfered to the boss. I figured I would conclude the video with one final little display on how I'm doing in the most recent test that I've been doing. Most of this was done on a recent stream. I'm now doing almost exclusively 8 mod corrupted maps version of this. It may even come out with a third 100 maps farming session. We'll see. But uh, currently 51 maps loaded onto. And you can see the RNG is pretty crazy on here. I'm counting cards. These are the cards that are pilfered to the boss, which should be doubled in the end after that. Total number of strong boxes spawning onto the map. Every map has a problem spawning strong boxes. It could be Shaper Influence map. could be Tier 17. could be stagnation could be any big small every single map has its issues you can look into it if you want that's why i recommend just doing jungle valley or mausoleum and then diviners opened also over here i mean get up to 15 could get zero okay could get 36 cards could get 2000 cards you never know right and so it it varies a lot but i am currently averaging over 600 cards to be pilfered to the boss on every map and then almost 31 boxes and then over four strong boxes diviner strong boxes open per map counting reopens i'm not tracking the exact valuable cards here but this is the extent of what i'm willing to track right now so guys that's it i hope you're able to learn at least a few things in this very long deep dive video uh, i'd be curious to know what your thoughts are for this strategy I know some of you are very much against it. Some of you are very much for it. I'd like to hear what the best card you've gotten to drop. I'm definitely jealous of those of you who have dropped the Quadruple House of Mirrors. I'm looking forward to that highlight <laughs> under my belt, but not yet. We'll see in the future. Uh, what other things would you like to see in an upcoming video? I'm definitely all ears, so... I like coming out with stuff like this. It's very deep dive on there, but you know, keep things lighthearted too. Got a nice combination of highlights and then <laughs> uh, very data driven stuff. Anyway, again, hope you're able to learn something. Hope you got some value out of this video. That's it from me for now. I'll see you in the next one.